Gail Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. Brought to you by... These reports have to be typed, and these filed right away. But, Mr. Mooney, it's 6.30 already. Well, thank you, Mrs. Carmichael. I still know how to tell the time. <laughs> but all this work will take me at least two hours. Will I get paid time and a half for overtime? No, you won't get paid anything. But that's not fair. I'll be working later than anybody else. You got here later than anybody else. <laughs> excuse for being late this morning. Good, yes. Believable, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Mooney, for being late, but the smog was so thick I couldn't find the bus. <laughs> I couldn't. No, get to work, please. Yes, sir. Working overtime for no money. Nobody appreciates anything around here. Oh, yes, they do. Only this morning, I called our president, Mr. Cheever, and I told him that my chair was worn out, and he told me that I would get a new chair. Yes, indeed. They reward people around here who use their heads. <laughs> then how come your chair wore out in the seat? <laughs> Come on in, Mary Jane. Oh, Lucy, I've got the most wonderful news. You'll never guess what happened to me. You'll never guess in a million years. Well, what happened? Guess. Oh, come on now, Mary Jane. I'm no good at guessing games. I'll give you a little hint. What's the best thing that can happen to a working girl? <gasps> You're getting married. No. <laughs> no? You're engaged? No. You got a date? <laughs> now, I guess I better tell you. I got a raise. Oh, Mary Jane, that is wonderful. Is it much of a raise? Well, no, but at least now my take-home pay is worth taking home. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's wonderful. When do you think you're going to get a raise? Me get a raise? Ha! Mr. Mooney won't even pay me for working overtime, let alone get me a raise. When did he give you your last one? Well, let me see. It was on Flag Day. I don't remember the year, but our, our flag still had 48 stars. <laughs> Terrible. Ah, well. How much money are you making now, Lucy? Oh, I'm ashamed to tell you. But every time I file my income tax, they send me a sympathy card. <laughs> well, have you ever hinted to Mr. Mooney that you wanted more money? Hinted? Look, I've done everything. I skipped lunch telling him I couldn't afford to eat. I told him I have to walk to work because I can't even afford a bus. The only time I ever got a reaction out of him was once when I came in with big holes in my coat. Oh, and he gave you a raise? No, he gave me a needle and thread and told me to stop looking like a slob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn it, I always forget that this plant is artificial. <laughs> I just don't understand it, Mary Jane. Seems to me that everybody in that bank has gotten a raise except me. Oh, I just think you're using the wrong approach. Well, what is the best way to get a raise? The best way to get a raise is to point out to Mr. Mooney what a good worker you are, that you're never absent, you're never late, and you never make mistakes. <laughs> now, well, what's the next best way? <laughs> Have you ever tried to appeal to a good side? I've never been able to find it. <laughs> well, Lucy, honestly, you've been there long enough. You're entitled to a raise. You're telling me. Well, you should just ask for it. I have. Be firm about it. Go in there in the morning and beard the lion in his den. Okay, but it would be easier getting a raise from a real lion. <laughs> Mooney speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Cheever. Yes, sir, the new chair arrived, sir. It's a beauty. I've just been admiring it, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Cheever. Thank you. Ah. Oh, oh, Mrs. 
Mrs. Mooney feeling? She's all right. And, and how was your... No, evening? you cannot have a raise. <laughs> how did you know I was going to ask for a raise? Mrs. Carmichael, when you come in here on time and inquire about my health and my wife's health, you obviously aren't aiming for a cut in your salary. <laughs> now, please get to work. Mr. Mooney, I've been working here a long time now. It seems as though everybody in this bank has gotten a raise except me. True. Well, Mr. Mooney, I realize I haven't been a very efficient secretary. True. And I am almost always late. True. And I, I do take a little too long on my coffee breaks. True. And I'm not a very good typist. True. But, Mr. Mooney, you're not going to give me a raise, are you? True. Why won't you? Because, as you just said, you're not efficient, you're always late, you take too long for your coffee breaks, and you are not a good typist. Yeah, but you can't think of one single reason on your own. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, we, uh, we have a very busy day ahead of us. Please get to work. <sighs> Mr. Mooney. What now? I think you are taking a very unappreciative attitude after all I've done for this bank. Just what have you done for this bank? <laughs> well, uh, in what condition was this bank before I came to work for it? It was the third largest financial institution in the city with assets of $300 million and 31 branches. And what condition is it in now? It is the third largest financial institution in the city with assets of $300 million and 31 branches. You see, I haven't heard it one bit. <laughs> Back, back, back. I still think you ought to give me a raise. Nobody gives a raise. You have to earn it. Well, how? Either by being very efficient, which in your case is too ridiculous to discuss, <laughs> or by performing some outstanding service for the bank. Like what? Well, Mr. Cheever gave his secretary an increase because she devised a new system of bookkeeping. She also suggested an advertising slogan for the bank. She also wears a sweater two sizes too small. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, this is no time to be facetious. Now let me give you a word of advice. Remember, the laborer is worthy of his hire. The climb up the ladder of success is not easy. How do you suppose I got where I am today? You married the boss's daughter. <laughs> I did not. She was his niece. <laughs> I work very hard to maintain my position here. I work extra hours. Uh, for example, today I am having lunch in my office. Yeah. So I can be here for an appointment with an important client. To get ahead, you have to work, 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 work. Now you think about that, Mrs. Conway. <laughs> Mr. Mooney. What? Uh, I'm going to take ten more minutes on my coffee break and just think about that. You are impossible! <laughs> You got your new chair, huh? <laughs> Mooney speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Cheever. Uh, yes, I'm expecting Mr. Leonard any time, sir. Well, I know he's a very important client of ours, sir, but I've never met him personally. He did. He produced the Danny Thomas show, yeah. Dick Van Dyke. Oh, and I Spy. Oh, well, thank you, sir. That's a big help to me. Yes, indeed. Thanks very much. Oh, and uh, thanks again for the chair. I flipped over it. <laughs> no, goodbye, sir. <clears throat> yes? Mr. Sheldon Leonard is here to see you, sir. I'm expecting him. Send him in, please.
Thank you. Have I interrupted your lunch? No, no. Uh, yo, no, I had a uh, lunch uh, hours ago, sir. Here's me. Oh, uh, Mr. Leonard, won't you sit down, sir? There you are. Thank Make you. Make yourself comfortable. Sure. You know, Mr. Leonard, although we've never met, I feel that I've known you for years. I used to go to all those gangster movies you were in. <laughs> I'm quite a fan of yours. Yes, I made a lot of those gangster movies. Yes. Uh, in fact, I still get bumped off three times a night on the Late Late Show. <laughs> Well, you were so believable as a gangster. Maybe I was too believable. Every time I stepped out of the house, the cops arrested me. <laughs> well, now, surely you explained to them who you were. Well, yes, I did, but from force of habit, I'd say it like this. I'd say, all right, get your hands off of me, copper, or you'll wind up in a cement kimono. <laughs> well, it must have been quite a loss to your public when you gave up acting to become a producer and director. What public? No. I was one of those actors that people would see on the street and they'd say, Hey, hey, look, there goes, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> the face was familiar, but they couldn't remember the name. Well, you have to expect that of people. From my own kids? <laughs> yeah. Twice the little finks turned me in for the reward. <laughs> Well, I must say it was a lucky day for television when you gave up acting and became a producer. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, yes, it was. It was indeed. Why, anyone who owns a television set today knows the name Sheldon Leonard. Except my kids. <laughs> they still refer to me as what's-his-name. <laughs> oh, well, I won't forget your name. Oh. No, sir, I love those television shows of yours. Oh. As that Danny Thomas show, the Dick Van Dyke, I Spy. That is the most wonderful show. The way you have worked that around so that the... Why, Mr. Leonard, you're blushing. Am I embarrassing you? Well, yes. Oh. But please continue. <laughs> you forgot Andy Griffith's show and Goma Pyle. Andy Griffith and Goma Pyle, yes, I... And I understand that you are currently creating a new series. Well, yes, that's right. We're shooting the pilot now. You're shooting the pilot? <laughs> that's an expression in television. It means that we're making a test, a sample film, you know. In fact, that's why I'm here to see you. Oh? Yes, we have a scene in which there's a bank holdup. And I think it would be more realistic if we filmed it in an actual bank. So, with your permission, I'd like to film it here. Uh, film it uh, here? Yes. In this bank? Yes. Uh, well, now, I, I'd like to oblige you, Mr. Leonard, but that would disrupt our entire day. Well, I don't intend doing it during your business hours. No, we'll film it at night after the bank is closed. Well, it's unprecedented and against all regulation. We're bonded and fully insured. Well, I'm afraid not. It, it's quite out of the question. The screen credit will read technical advisor Theodore Mooney. That's Theodore J. Mooney. And when do we start? <laughs> We want to film it tomorrow night, but I'd like to come in tonight and rehearse the scene with my principal actors, if well, you don't mind. By all means. And don't you worry about anything going wrong, Mr. Mooney. I'll watch your money as if it were my own. <laughs> well, with all the shows you do, most of it is. <laughs> That's a little joke. I just made that up. <laughs> right on the spur of the moment. <laughs> Maybe you could use it in your... Uh, your uh, it's not very funny. <laughs> Is there anything else I can do for you, sir? Well, I would like to familiarize myself with the layout of the bank here. In the words of the trade, I'd like to case the joint. Oh, <laughs> case the joint, by all means, to help yourself. Maybe so, no. Oh, I'd better give you a key, Mr. Oh, Leonard. Yes. yes. Now, here's the key to the front door of the bank, so you can use that tonight. Ah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks very much. It's a great pleasure. Meeting you. Technical advisor, Theodore J. Mooney. Ah! <laughs> Busy. Give me your check, Mary Jane. I'll have it cash for you so you won't have to wait in line. Okay, thanks. Would you uh, like the bills in any particular denomination? Well, I'd like it in tens, but it's only for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just only take a minute. Maggie, when you get a chance. What's the matter? Shh. What's the matter? Shh. The bank is going to be held up. Held up? How do you know? That man behind us is a gangster. A gangster? Yeah, look. No, don't look. <laughs> I don't want him to get suspicious. Now you can look. Don't look so long. <laughs> Susie, how do you know he's a gangster? Shh, because I recognize his face. Just look at him. Don't look. <laughs> Are you sure he's a gangster? Of course I'm sure. Well, he's probably one of the ten most wanted crooks in the whole country. Doesn't he look like a crook to you? Don't look. <laughs> you know something? I think I saw his picture in the post office. Oh, boy, he's got a criminal face if I ever saw one. With those beady eyes, that thin, cruel lips, and that low slung forehead. And look at that receding chin. He hasn't got a receding chin. Shh. He probably had a chin job. <laughs> Hey, we can't call the police. He hasn't done anything yet. I'm going over and see if I can hear what he's saying. Hello, Frankie. It's all set for the bank tonight. Yep, it's a perfect setup. I have the boys here at 8 o'clock. No, we can't wait. We have to shoot the pilot. <laughs> I was right. He is going to rob the bank. Right. right. Not only that, he's going to make his escape in a stolen airplane. How do you know? He just said he was going to shoot the pilot. <laughs> Let's call the police. No, now, wait a minute. We don't have any evidence. Well, you said he was going to rob the bank tonight. Yeah. And I'm going to be right here when he does. Lucy, you're crazy. No, I'm not. The minute he starts robbing this bank, I'm going to catch him red-handed. You better tell Mr. Mooney. I will not. There's probably a reward out for that crook. Mr. Mooney's the type who would keep it. Besides, this is my chance to do something for the bank so I can earn my raise. There's got to be an easier way to get a raise. Well, there is, but I'm not the type to wear a sweater. Two sizes too small. <laughs> now, listen. This is what we're going to do. We? Yes, we. Now, listen. <laughs> I already told you so they'll think we're scrub women and not kill us. Well, I hope not. I wouldn't want to get caught dead in this outfit. Never mind. Hey, Charlie, you wait for the car. Go, go. <laughs> okay, fellas, come on. Oh, the nerve of him coming right through the front door. Oh, it's really stuck. Shh, don't touch. Listen, don't talk. You're talking. Let's not talk about not talking. Shh. <laughs> this is really a setup. It's a perfect setup. Yeah. There's a good place for us to line the people up when we start shooting. Right there. <laughs> now remember, this whole thing has got to go like clockwork or we blow the whole bit. Now, Louie, you go back to the cashier's cage and scoop up all the money, right? Go. You, you get ready to unpack the nitro so you can blow the ball. All right? You stay at the door. Keep an eye on the door. <laughs> we can... Louie! Hey, Louie! Now, where did he get to? What's the matter, boss? Louie disappeared. Go get him, will you? You bet. Now, I want you to remember that you got to keep an eye on this door all the time. <laughs> Hey, Harry! Harry, Louie! Where did they get to? Everybody is disappearing here. Go find them, will you? Okay, I'll get them. Bring them on. I gotta talk. Hey, boys. Louie! Harry, Pete! Somebody! Where did everybody get to? What are you doing? Oh, excuse me. 
wasn't here alone. How? Did you see some men go back there? Men? Yeah. If there was men back there, you think we'd be out here? <laughs> I'd better go see for myself. I this idea for a new television series. You see, it would be about this, this kooky, red-headed girl, you see, and she works in a bank, and she gets into all sorts of impossible situations, and forget it, nobody would ever believe it. 